Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee. Talking with the dudes from Deaf Heaven. Very excited doing? about this. This is awesome. Yeah. And they are kind enough to actually literally move their entire setup to another venue inside of the same venue so that we can see all this because there's another band sound checking. Um, so we're going to start with both you guys because you're both playing the 6505, correct? Yeah. Right. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, I guess the story behind the amp is uh, for years uh, at the beginning of the, of the band, uh, we had a bass player when we were all really, really broke. And uh, he, our, our first bass player, pretty much bought all this gear to allow us to be able to essentially gig. Play, sure. Uh, and we had, uh, he had a v Ampeg V4, which I loved. Uh, but the problem with it is those are obviously notoriously moody. Oh, yeah. um, so we would take it to get fixed all the time. We took it on tour and it broke. All this stuff just kept happening. And uh, on top of that, it was all his stuff. So eventually he was, I had saved up a little bit of money and uh, I'm, those who know me know I'm not exactly the most gear-centric guy on the planet, but uh, so I was asking for his opinion on stuff and he was like, you should try the 6505. Uh, and so I saved up about 350 to 400 dollars, I think, and got this off Craigslist. So this is the first uh, cool. 6505 I ever got, and it uh, it essentially just uh, the second I played it, it's it I fell in love with it. It's like uh, you know, it's a, it's essentially a tank. You can drop this thing off of a roof and it'll still sure. play. I dropped one down a set of stairs once yeah. and it still works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, uh, it's it's pretty great. I've only had to get it repaired in the last had it for six years now. Only had to get it repaired like three times. What have you had done to it? Um, nothing too crazy, just like, tubes. you know, tubes replaced, but, you know, nothing, nothing that crazy. Uh, and yeah, to this day, when, when it's working, it's, it's the, uh, it's the, my favorite PV we have. We've, we have a, a sponsorship now from PV, so, uh, we all play PV stuff. Um, he, we have, he's got a 6534+. plus. I actually grew up playing 5150s when I was a kid, and then 6505, you know, it's just like a natural. Sure, natural. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's essentially the story behind this. So this is the first one I ever got, and then um, I think sometime in the last two years we met up with PV, and they were interested in working with us, and so they've been super helpful. They send us uh, they send us amps whenever we need them, awesome. and uh, yeah, like they've even shipped them to over overseas for fests when we've needed them, or it's like there was one time where something broke down and we were like in Chicago, and they shipped it overnighted it from uh, Austin. Yeah. Yeah, that's they've awesome. super helped us out. So that's a big, big shout out for there. On top of that, it's like my favorite amp to play essentially yeah. now, uh, live at least. So I've always loved a 5150. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the 6505 is very, very similar. Yeah. However, I have not played the 34 version. Mm -hmm. Do you play that intentionally to uh, make it a different? I don't actually play that. That's my our spare. Yeah, that's our spare. Oh, you have a spare. Okay, cool. The 34, right? Yeah. 30, it's it's just a little brighter at the plus. But yeah, sure. we we. We went through like a whole series of them. Like we, we always ask for 6505s up front, essentially when we can get them. Yeah. Uh, but there was a time or something when we wanted, we wanted to get the same amps in Europe because I don't know if what, what it is. The 6505 pluses is what they were giving us in Europe, and it was they work. They're great, but I think they're a little bit more for like the tech death death metal guys. Oh, it's a little more pointed. It's a little bit more yeah, bright, the, and it's like the for people. Really sharp. Yeah, yeah. So for us, it's not exactly what we needed. Um, we make it work if it really, you know, if it's all yeah. Got yeah. It's so with the, with the 34, like, have you had to play it live? Yeah. Yeah. We've. Yeah, that's that's what I was getting to. Yeah. While and sometimes if our amps like fuck up. Or sure. Something, but yeah, we also, I mean, that's the other thing is that's the reason we picked that amp is because it's the closest to the 6505, at least in our experience. So. Sure. Well, obviously, I mean, it's running EL34, so mm -hmm. it stands to reason that it might have more of a, like, a British kind of sound. Kinda. Do, you, do you feel like it sounds more like classic, like mo modern, or classic rock? Yeah, yeah I guess, like, a little bit, rock. yeah. A little more. A little but more synthetic, almost. Too. I'm guessing it has the same presence control, so can you get the gain out of it? Yeah, you can. Um, totally. The, the the only thing that's the difference is I believe the, it has two two EQs. Two EQs yeah. The, the clean tone They're separate. The yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah. 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 That's, but it, it's but it it's doesn't cool. Really work as well as this one For me, our, our whole thing is always I'm, the less knobs, the better, in my totally. opinion. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great amp. We used it for the entirety. I think we both used it for the Lamb of God tour. We both used it for some portions of the Paul Bear tour. So we use it all the time, but. Uh, yeah, the, the, the knight in shining armor is the 6505. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Are you guys doing a lot of channel switching or any kind of... Yeah, that's pretty yeah, much what we do. Every okay. channel, 
Yeah, you there's do. no, we don't have any distortion. We do have distortions so you, for like. It's all head. It's all head, yeah. 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 And this one particularly sounds really good. I honestly, I, like I'm with you guys, I've never heard a better overdrive distortion sound for like the kind of music that I like, obviously, like metal and right, hardcore right. and punk yeah. and stuff, than a, like the 5150 or a 6505. Yeah. They just, there's nothing yeah, natural that does that. Sound in general yeah. Is yeah, and like, yeah, and we, before when we had the uh, the V4 situation, uh, we also had a bunch of some VTM 60s and VTM 120s, which are great. If we could have those, I would ha use those, but uh, the only thing with that is they're single channel amps, so you gotta roll back on the volume if to you wanna. Your and yeah, stuff, yeah, and so the, really the, the reason is just that we use these is it's essentially the best of both worlds with that. Totally. And I've, I've had some, you know, tone snob friends who have been curious to uh, that if that we can get good clean tone out of these, but I've never had a problem with That's it. That's where I was going with it. Have you played 5150s before? You know, yeah, yeah. hey, I love that amp more than anything. It's obviously not a clean platform yeah. for anything. So, did they correct it with this? Do you think, think this so. is better? I think so. I mean, back it, then I never even used the clean tone. It was yeah, all just not. metal shit. But uh, yeah, I think this one has really clear. Kind of warm, clean tone. Exactly, and and it's you know you're not going to get like a Fender Twin. I was going to say it's it. obviously not going to yeah. sound like a Fender it's, or a Marshall, cool, but it yeah. But for cool. us, we can we can make we make it work for our for our purposes. No, with your with your clean channel, tone. are you setting that at like something clean with a ton of headroom as a pedal platform, kind of to work with the amp, or or is it something where you're throwing pedals on whether there's distortion or it's clean or. Um, yeah, I mean, we our our whole goal with the clean tone is is uh, usually headroom. I usually, I mean, this is like really loud, but it, yeah, usually I'm like three or four yeah. on pre and post is at like seven or eight. Yeah, so it's seven. the most I'm trying to get it loud, but the the maximum amount of headroom possible. Clearest you can possibly. Yeah, get it too. but again, we also with you know anyone who listens to the band will know that there's a ton of like effects on the distortion stuff as well. That sure. and that manages it doesn't really ever sound muddy or anything. So yeah. It's usually pretty cool. Well, that's awesome. Hey, I really appreciate you guys talking amps with me. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through um, everybody's pedal board individually now. And so uh, we'll, we'll start with Carrie. Sure. Cool. All right, Carrie, I want to talk pedals, but before we do that, we, you got to tell me about these Dunables, man. These are awesome. Yeah. So do yeah. you know Sasha? Yeah. Uh, we met Sasha on a tour uh, in 2014, I believe. Uh, yeah, we did. We were both supporting uh, Between the Bear to Me. And. Uh, those they're great guys and like but they were all like on their bus for the most part which was cool because they were luckily to let us all take over their green rooms but so <laughs> anyway so for the most part that tour was pretty much just us and intronaut just hanging out the whole time uh, and so we just kind of became like buds off that tour and uh we saw his guitars uh that he was making and so we asked him about it and he was like yeah sure i'd love to make you guys some and uh so he made us some for like a pretty good discounted price uh Including this, the one he, he g gave me. This is a, uh, a moonflower, I believe, is what it's called. But, so rad. But yeah, usually he has like the thing or the uh, uh, pickup switch down here, and I had it switched up here. And then he has like tone knobs and stuff. But I was like, all I want is just a big volume, just one essentially. Big knob. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, this is pretty reminiscent of your your Les Paul. Yeah. With a you know with the trim and yeah. stuff. Was that was, were you going for something similar? Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. I was I was asking him just to uh, to throw throw another Kaler on there, and he he uh, he totally did it. But uh, yeah, it's like it's just the same thing. Like I wanted like the Gibson heaviness or whatever, but with the uh, with the the wavy possibilities of a Kaler for shoegaze for yeah. the shoegazy stuff. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. So is this were you like, hey, this is kind of exactly like I want, or was he like, hey? It's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, again, like I'm not, I'm the, I don't know, I'm not won't claim to be the world's most uh, biggest guitar expert, but I was essentially just like, you know, uh, I'd love to have one of your guitars, but um, just kind of like do what you th like. I'll, I just told him like whatever you think would make our sound sound best, but like in terms of like a Les Paul. So like gotcha. I essentially make your version of a Les Paul for me at a Kaler, just one knob. And awesome. I just let him do do his thing, and he came out with this awesome guitar. Does it feel close? Like, is it the same scale, length, and everything? Uh, it's a little bit. It's a. Because it looks it's, long. Yeah, yeah, it's jumbo frets, uh, which is one of the things that he likes to do, uh, which I like too. Uh, I've got big, big chunky fingers, and um, but yeah, the weight is about the same. I believe these are walnut or what? Oak? What do you know what these are? Sorry, I shouldn't. I no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I don't know what, what it is. Yeah, but it's a gorgeous piece of wood either way. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. what pickups, or is that something that you wanted, or is he was like, this hey, is, Yeah, okay. it's it's some sort of a boutique humbucker, uh, Gibbs, it's some sort of Les Paul copy. He, is, he 
again, like I'm far from an expert. He knows all that stuff. But yeah, yeah totally. it's literally, he just told me it's like a better version of humbuckers, so. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. And then you have this, you're playing this one as well, right? Yeah. I'm just, if you don't mind, I'm gonna yeah, pick this free. up to show these guys because it yeah. rules. Yeah, I love this giant knob, dude. Yeah, and then it's it's kill a switch? yeah, it's a kill switch. Exactly. Badass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he he w was trying to get rid of this thing for a minute. It used to be like light blue, and I was like, and he was like, hey, I got this guitar that the guy doesn't want. Um, tell me what you want done to it, and I'll just give it to you. And so he showed up uh, right before our LA show. Uh, couple of months ago and just gave it to us <laughs> so he gave Shiv his guitar too so yeah he's he's been a killer guy and he makes yeah. makes great stuff this is a great looking guitar oh, man. I'm awesome. loving that. yeah that's awesome you do you have any idea what these are I don't either again yeah he just kind of shows up and I, I just let him yeah, and it's it's hard them. to probably see on camera but they almost look like paper yeah or something like it's like a really weird like school. little uh, yeah it's like a weird like he puts like these wood finishes or something on them yeah. I don't know what it is so very very cool well yeah. right on all right now let's get to the fun stuff yeah Pedals and, and metal, all right, cool. Yeah. So, all right, walk me through your signal chain and then I guess we can probably demo some sounds. Yeah, um, so this is just an, obviously, your average Ernie Ball volume pedal. Cool. I've had this for like six years and it's never let never me broken, down. Huh? Yeah, huh. Uh, which is weird because I use it a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, touring, not that Ernie Ball stuff is not incredible. No, yeah, it's just exactly. you're on tour, you're throwing stuff around. Exactly, yeah. I'm on like my fourth memory man now, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, and then I run that out of, uh, into the uh, a TU2 or whatever, and um, or that's a TU3 actually. My old one was a TU2. Um, and then this is the, uh, I call it the Blue Memory Man, but people know it as the uh, Stereo Memory Man with Hazari. Again, I have no, I don't know what Hazari is or anything like that, but uh, this is like the main go-to thing for, this is like one of the first pedals that I had uh, with the band. And that's where you're getting a lot of your washy, weird. Yeah, that's everything from like uh, just straight, you know, full, full on delay to the reverse reverb stuff that I do Love on that, yeah. on the uh, the shoegazy stuff. Uh, so yeah, again, like this is I've literally gone through like five of these over the years because I'm stepping on them so much every night. What's your go-to setting on that pedal? It's pretty much this. I usually have it on the three second echo uh, with the blend at twelve, the, the K at zero filter is at either seventy five or fifty percent depending on um, you know or twelve o'clock or three o'clock depending on the song. For the uh, new Bermuda stuff, it's usually filtered so at at the uh, at the three o'clock setting. Um, but for the old uh, for some other stuff, it's usually at twelve o'clock. Um, then the repeats is usually at twelve, and the delay I never really use this except for on our Mogwai cover, which is like a weird because it's a whole different setting for sure, the reverse yeah, reverb totally thing. Different. Kick that bad boy on. Let me hear. It. Yeah, sure. I'm curious about this blue memory man. Yeah, here I'll show you the uh, the Mogwai thing. So I looked up this. Uh, I looked up this, I literally YouTubed one day the uh, how to do Kevin Shields <laughs> stuff. And you found a video. And I found a video with this thing. And uh, so yeah, this is the, whenever I do this song, it's literally just this with no, um, with no other pedals, it's this and distortion. And I pretty much always, people who see us live will know that I, I check it to make sure it's got that thing going. And essentially, it just says that. Okay, yeah, there's no you, reverb or anything on it at all. And so when you, when you throw it on distortion and do this, you get like a cool like. It's very oddly singy. Yeah, exactly. It's like exactly. got this weird, yeah, that's It's so like a wavy chorus of angels or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know what it is. But and yeah. it also like saves your wrist from. <laughs> Absolutely. It's <laughs> one know, of the few songs I don't have to be going like this the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. So, very, uh, very neat. Yeah, there's that. And then for the most part, though, uh, for, for the other 98% of the set, I'm usually just, usually just something like, you know, like, like. <laughs> You know, just Pretty the normal. Delay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that. Um, after that is the Morley Crybaby, which I think Shiv gave to me. Uh, yes, which is, you know, just your average. Everybody knows yeah. that guy. Uh, after that is the, um, oh yeah, the Boss uh, Space Echo clone, essentially. It's like, you know, it's the pedal version of, yeah, yeah. yeah their, uh, their Space Echo without all the tape stuff. But uh, yeah, I have that set on pretty much one setting for the most part. Um, this comes into a couple times in the set. 
the end of a uh, comeback is this pedal, which is just this and some uh, reverb is RV6, yeah. yeah. Man, it's interesting to to see the way you use trem because, like, obviously these trems were invented. You know, when people started really using trems like that in the '80s, it was like, Wah. yeah, exactly. It's and to see somebody do the very King subtle, yeah. like, super, like, almost like Red House Painters thing with it, it's right. like, oh, I love that. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, it's kind of the thing. Is like, it's the the difference between, I guess, it's like, you know, not a Floyd Rose. I'm not doing what well, you're know, like, the like dive bomb <laughs> thing. Yeah, 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 but it's also. We're playing like metal, heavier metal influenced music, but also with the waviness. So I, people thought I was crazy when I showed up with that blue Gibson. Especially but, uh, with, without any kind of locking mechanism. Like, yeah. do you have any trouble with it? No, that's the weirdest thing. I, and the same thing as on the Les Paul. I've never, people are always like, how's your guitar stay in tune? And I, obviously I'm not leaning on You're it not like crazy. Cranking, but, but still, yeah. It's still, it's still something. And it's, yeah, it's, I don't know what it is about Kalers, but uh, I've never had any problem with them at hmm. all. So now, are you running a thicker gauge string to kind of compensate for any of that? Uh, not really. No. I'm just on tens. Tens. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Cool. Uh, it's like you know, I, I went, I struggled, went back and forth between, you know, heavy bottoms or heavy tops, light bottoms, light bottom, all that yeah. kind of thing. But uh, just run a standard set. Now. Yeah, I'm literally just doing. We're, we got a Diodario sponsorship, so I just write, uh, do the uh, NY XLs. Tens and it's been perfect. I know, those are like a newer string. Are they coated or anything? Uh, I don't know. Because I've heard people say that they're like really hard to break and you know. They are really hard to really, break. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, we literally and we abuse the hell out of. I was these. gonna say playing in a metal band, especially yeah. with a, with the trem. And we and we we go like probably it's like once a week or something. We're changing mm -hmm. these, so we're we're not the uh, most kindest people to our gear, but <laughs> there you go. Cool. And now we're on to the one of my favorite pedals, man. That Grand Orbiter is something yeah, else. Yeah, this yeah. Is, uh, Show me how you're using that bad boy. Yeah, and this is pretty much I've just just got this uh, just almost like just for some subtlety during the set. This is uh, the you know keep the rate kind of low, and uh, you know just again just this and the RV RV five or whatever. This is the uh, this is for the baby blue sound on the record. Is the <laughs> So yeah, I actually that part was originally written on the uh, on the uh, Earthquaker uh, Rainbow Machine or whatever. But you can you know it's a that's a crazy pedal, but if you adjust it the right way, it can just be a chorus, essentially like a super chorus. Sure, yeah. Uh, and on I think probably the last time I did one of these videos, I uh, I was demo working on that riff at the time, but. Um, yeah, so that's again, that's that's kind of just replaced my chorus pedal. It's not a chorus pedal, but it's like it does it's just, the modulation. It does the you, things that the, I need. Yeah, yeah the okay. few times I need that during the set, that's what I use. And then, uh, yeah, and then we come to then the RV Five, yeah. yeah, which is just you know I had a Holy Grail for years, uh, and I like the Holy Grail a lot. Uh, and it's literally just something as we were somewhere in Germany or something, and my Holy Grail, again, I abused the hell out of it and it broke. And so they only had an RV Five. I bought it and it worked fine. I haven't, yeah. haven't really looked back. So do you yeah. have a preference, or do you even notice the you difference? You know, I really? just I just stick it on stick it on hall. Oh, yeah. um, I keep the time uh, at the time or the length or whatever at uh, yeah the times at about one two o'clock, and uh, everything else is you know the hall setting and everything else is about. 12 o'clock and that's pretty much just does it does it for you this is again like all the all the clean pretty stuff the it's just just long enough to where like it's there but like it's not nothing super crazy you know and hearing it in person that 65 of 5 clean side is definitely improvement exactly. from the 5150 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. and so yeah that's the thing is like uh actually uh, had uh Nick from uh, Touche Amore actually texted me one day when they uh, they were on tour in Europe and all they could get they're usually using Fender Twins, and he said uh, they showed up and all they had was 6505s <laughs> and he was like, dude, these work for you, right? Like you don't have any problems with them? And I was like, yeah, I mean it's good for me. I'm not like a big tone snob or anything. Quite but a bit difference in the tones of you guys though. Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he yeah, but he said he said once he saw it, once he was like, oh yeah, I just want to make because there's certain amps that I, I totally complained at him about having to use for clean tone, uh, but. 
Yeah, I, told, I was like, yeah, you're, you're good. And he, the, I asked him how it went afterwards, and he was like, oh, I actually love that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Rules. Yeah. I know you're not a super gear-centric dude. You've said uh, that in interviews before, but has, has there ever been any, has any of this gear inspired your playing? Like, for example, I know on the demo, you wrote almost everything on acoustic yeah. song, right? Mm -hmm. Has there ever, uh, have any of these pedals, like, you kicked it on and been like, oh, shit, that's a riff, like? Uh, yeah, a little, I mean, with the Memory Man, mostly. Sure. Uh, that, the, this, the Memory Man is, like, that's the end of Sunbather, again, with the, the Mogwai cover. Uh, I think for Vertigo, there's, like, a, a bunch of wavy stuff. We use the reverse, uh, the reverse echo on that. But, uh, no, nah, for the most part, it's, again, it's, I, now I don't, you know, I wrote that stuff on acoustic because that was, like, out of necessity. That was the only sure. stuff we had at the time. But so now when I'm writing at home, I literally have like a big cab like this and then uh, PV sent me and Shiv each like a little mini, they have these mini 6505 yeah, heads that are awesome. Cool. Yeah. It's, they're they're cool. amazing. So I literally just sit there with one of those and my pedal board and just kind of mess around. But again, for the most part, yeah, it's my whole thing has just been like, if, if a riff is, if a, if a riff sounds good enough acoustically, it's going to sound great. Then yeah, yeah it's, it's just going to be improved when you, uh, sure. when you run, run it through. Some yeah, 100% with them. you on that. So yeah. Okay, so one last question about the, the 6505. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks here like, you know, your pre-gain is only at like a four, mm -hmm. and your post-gain is just past five? Yeah, essentially, yeah. Um, so without pedals, is there any way I could hear just the clean and then just the filthy? Yeah, yeah. The cool, clean cool. is uh, just... Sparkly. Again, that's night and day. Yeah. yeah totally. And then, uh, yeah, the distortion is, is again next level. It's pretty much what sold me on the amp. It's just uh, like. Insanely chuggy, so that's yeah, that does the, that does the trick for sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, cool, man. I appreciate you taking the time yeah. to talk to us. We're gonna talk to Shiv about his pedals and stuff, and you guys have an awesome show. Sounds good, man. Cool. Yeah. Okay, now we got Shiv. We're gonna talk about your Dunable, obviously. Right. This looks a little reminiscent to a, a Jazz Master. Is that kind of what you were going for? Uh, yeah, the first one you made me was a, a Jag body, but this one's called the Yeti. Uh, it does have a similar vibe, though. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily like you know pickups or anything, but it does like <laughs> it has the, the shape. shape it yeah, does look fast. Yeah, yeah it's I'm awesome. all about that. And also, again, one knob, love that. Same thing. Yeah. yeah cool. Mm -hmm. And do you know what pickups are in this bad boy? Uh, he said he took them out of an old Les Paul. I think they're '57, like classics. Or cool. Something. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, very, very cool. And are, is that pretty much your number one? Are you running anything else? This is the one I'm using now. We were using a Gibson sponsorship for a bit. Um, I'm still using my Gibson. It's just he gave me this guitar, and it's just been fucking really awesome. cool. Yeah. So. Plus, it looks awesome. Yeah, the appointments thanks, are so man. cool. I love that. The first one he made me was just all silver. Wanted the like mirror pick guard and just, you know. But he made me a similar one that I, I really like. Cool. It's just heavier, you know. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, 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 I talked to Kerry about it, but the scaling looks a lot longer. It does, This yeah. looks more like a Fender scaling, almost even longer. Yeah, and it's got the wide. Super wide, wide yeah, effects and stuff. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, your pedal board is a little more lean and mean. Yeah, it's just simple. But you got man. some really fun stuff on here. Like, uh, walk me through this. Yeah, I've got the freeze pedal, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, I use for interludes and stuff. It's just... Just, you know, soaring Still. stuff. You can kind of just, you know, latch on to like whatever root note you're playing with on a clean part or something. And it'll just continue to kind of. Yeah, I wash mean, you can even stuff, use right? it where it doesn't like just set until your foot's off, so. Oh, as soon as you take yeah. your foot off. Yeah, oh, exactly. Awesome. Like. You know. It's a cool momentary feature. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Exactly. And then Holy Grail. Got the Holy Grail. Which, you know, we barely use the reverb. I use it really lightly, just like, like cool. you know. Cool. A little bit of a splash on there. Yeah, just a yeah. little bit. And then the DD7, this is my delay, tap tempo, a bunch of stuff. I had a big pedal board for a while, but I just kind of minimalized for, for tour For purposes. tour, it makes yeah. a lot more sense to mm -hmm. not bring all your, exactly, <laughs> all your stuff dude. with you. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then are you using, a, is this a volume or a wah? Uh, it's a wah, yeah, you know. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool, and that takes us to the Mel 9. Uh, the Mel 9, I just picked that one up, actually. It's also good for clean parts. Mainly all the pedals I use, like, I'll only use the delay on distortion parts, but, yeah, this, this one's pretty good for just 
back. I, I don't use it too heavy on this. I use it really lightly so it matches in with the guitars. It's, it's strange. Th that sounded strange because you hear, you definitely hear like almost like an unaffected signal and then behind it you hear. Yeah, I've got the dry, I've got the dry yeah. going with the, the effect. Cool, for so sample, you got it pretty high, yeah. Yeah, for sample purposes, I'll just go straight with like, you know, like. So fun and evil. Yeah, it I is. I love that. It can be kind of cheesy, so you have to You gotta be careful it. with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, well, it. It's got some cool like choir settings that I use on parts too. But like I said, I mixed it in with the, yeah. with the dry. So key. Yeah, it helps. You can really add a point to it. And like yeah, have it kind of exactly. Have and it just kind of adds a background effect to the, the actual guitar part. Very, very cool. Yeah, man. Are you um, running 10s as well? Uh, I play 11s, but NYXLs also. Sure, same deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to walk us through all this stuff and help demystify a very right mystifying sound. So this <laughs> yeah. is great, man. This is Perry with Premier Guitar. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Thank check you. out our other rig rundowns, review demos, all that fun stuff, and definitely check out New Bermuda. See you guys. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.